Hello everyone, I am here today with a video on how to love your houseplants without killing them. I am pretty new to houseplants and when I first started, I tended to love them by watering them, which is not really the best thing because most plants tend to be overwatered. I used to bring a plant home and water it immediately regardless of whether or not the soil was already moist. And after obsessing about plants for the past few months, I've really learned my lesson and I've come up with a few ways to love your plants in a very non-invasive way. For the most part this is loving from a distance and you won't do anything to harm your plants. So in this video I'm not going to be talking about watering, put that watering can away. I'm not going to be talking about repotting, pruning, or fertilizing. These four things are a little more invasive and while they are important for plants, it's also very easy to overdo it, so it's best to do those things gradually as you learn more about plants. With that preamble out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the first way to love your plants without killing them. This is one of my favorite ways, and that is just to look at them. You can look at them from a distance like I'm doing now. I've got 20 plants or so behind the camera that I can see. They are beautiful. They give me this very nice sense of of calm and inner peace. I just love looking at them in that way. If I'm lying on the couch, which is beside me here, I will face the window so I can see my plants. And every time I see them, it's like a giant exhale. I just feel a little bit more relaxed. They're very calming and soothing. So you could look at them from a distance or look at them up close, which is something that I really love to do as well. I just love examining the plants to see any points of new growth and just marvel at how amazing it is that we can grow this in our homes. The other thing to look for when you're observing your plants and really looking at the individual leaves and examining them is of course to look for pests. This plant in particular is my jade pothos and it has mealybugs. I thought I had gotten rid of them because I hadn't seen any for a long time but I stopped looking at it every night and all of a sudden a few more mealybugs popped up because of their life cycle. They were probably too small or maybe they were still eggs the last time I checked and then in that time span, it was only about a week or so, some must have hatched or grown and I saw some additional ones. So looking at your plants either from a distance or up close is a very great non-invasive way to enjoy your plants, to love your plants, but not do anything that will damage them. The next way to love your plants without killing them is to learn about them. This I find is very appealing to me because I am very new to plants, but there are tons of resources in books that you can borrow from the library if you don't wanna buy them, or you can look at tons of different blogs and YouTube videos. There are so many people out there who have green thumbs, who have experience, with houseplants that you can learn from. While plants generally need the same things like water and light, they also have things that are very specific to them. So for example, some plants do very well if they dry out in between waterings, but there are certain plants that like to have their soil be a little bit more moist. Things like that you of course learn through experience, but you can jumpstart that knowledge by looking up your plants online and that will help you understand them a bit better and have a better appreciation for them and their different characteristics, which is a great way to show your love. The next thing I really like to do for my plants is to wipe their leaves. I put this one third because you'll probably want to learn about your plants first. There are certain plants with more delicate leaves that you perhaps don't want to take a wet cloth or a wet paper towel to them, but most of the plants that I have do benefit from that. What I'll do is I'll just wet a small cloth or paper towel and I'll go ahead and wipe the leaves gently to remove any layers of dust or dirt that have accumulated on the leaf surface. This does happen especially if you bring a new plant home. This set of philodendron vines actually had very very dirty leaves so I like to go ahead and wipe them down. That helps the plant use light a lot better in order to help with photosynthesis and it will help the plant grow and just be really really healthy. The next way to love your plants without killing them is to fan them. Now not not all plants like drafts, so make sure you keep them away from heating vents or the flow of air conditioning, but 
A nice little fan does really well for plants because it increases the air circulation around them. If you leave your plants for too long in the same place without any heating or cooling on them, which is a good thing, the air around them can get a little bit stale. What you'll want to do is just fan them gently. You don't have to put too much force or effort into it, just to increase a little bit of airflow. And you can do this with them sitting in their usual spot. You don't have to pick them up to do this. I'm just doing this as a demonstration. But something like this, every few days, is all it takes to increase the airflow around the plant. You can feel like you're doing something nice for the plant and something that will benefit the plant without being super invasive. The first four ways of loving your plants without killing them were practical things. The next three are a little bit more creative or artistic or esoteric, so they may not be for everyone, but I'm going to suggest them anyway and you can decide whether or not it's something that you want to try. One of the things that I really love to do is to photograph my plants. And if you've been on my website at all to look at my plant collection, you will know this. I really love to document my plants through photography. I like to show their roots when I'm repotting them, new points of growth. I just really find it um, visually appealing for myself and hopefully it's um, a good resource for others as well. So for example, with this dwarf umbrella tree, I'm gonna to photograph this teeny tiny new point of growth. I had one before but it turned black and fell off. Fingers crossed that this point of new growth will survive but these are things that I love to document because it's hard to see the progress when you see your plants every day and when you look at your plants every day. It's only when you look back and you realize that this beautiful spider plant was teeny tiny. I almost killed this one by overwatering it and now it has put out a spiderette, a little baby right here. So things like this I love to capture and document via photography. I share most of my photos on my website, but if you like, you can share photographs on Instagram. I do that from time to time, or you can just keep the photos for yourself. I use my phone to take the photos and I just love scrolling through and seeing all of the green. The next way to love your plants without killing them is to draw them. I am not a fantastic visual artist, but I did go ahead and try drawing some plants when I was doing the artist way in my bullet journal. And I noticed that when I was drawing plants, I started seeing them differently. I started noticing things about them that I wouldn't have noticed before. Things about the color, the way they grow, the shape of the leaves, the shape of the overall plant in general. Just lots of things come to life when you draw something. It gives you a different perspective, a very um, kind of like broken down, deeper perspective of things. And I think that's the case with all types of drawing, but I've only noticed that because I've only recently drawn plants. The last way to love your plants without killing them that I'm going to be talking about today is to talk to them. Talking to them gives them a dose of carbon dioxide, but the other thing that it does is to release your own mental stress or anxiety. Plants are wonderful listeners. They are alive and they are non-judgmental. They will not have an issue with anything you say to them. I usually talk nicely to them, but they won't mind if you're um, upset and you just want to vent. Maybe it'll feel good and you'll want to keep doing it, or maybe you'll feel silly and you won't do it again, but give it a try. You never know unless you try. That is going to be it for my tips on how to love your plants without killing them. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Hope you got some ideas on things that you can do for your plants because I know we all love our house plants. We really, truly love them, but we can't love them so much that they um, perish. If you have any other non-invasive ways that you like to love your plants without killing them, please leave them in the comment section down below. I'm always down to hear more about house plants. They're my obsession right now. I love talking about them, thinking about them, reading about them. It's just, um, I'm over the top with house plants at the moment. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll be back very soon with a house plant show and tell where I show you my complete collection as it stands now of between 20 and 30 plants. So that will be the next video that I post in about a week or so. If you have any suggestions for plant related topics that you would like to see in the future, 
please leave them in the comment section down below and I will work on those videos. I will see you all very soon in my houseplant show and tell. Until then, please take care and bye for now.